Lepra. <laughs> Hi, my name is Levi. I'm 16, and I love basketball, soccer, and anything that has to do with working out. Hi, my name is Natalie, and <laughs> <laughs> oops, I'm 12, and I love gymnastics and cooking and swimming. Hi, I'm Zaria, and I'm 11 years old. I love gymnastics and crafts and, and cooking. <laughs> We're the Rupert family. I'm an American Sign Language interpreter and a musician, and I'm the oldest of seven kids. And I remember even when I was a kid, I was trying to convince my parents to adopt. I'm really bad at signing and talking at the same time, so Marissa's going to caption this for me. I'm a mechanical and a hydraulic engineer, and I also play guitar. Um, I grew up as an only child. Um, before I met Marissa, I had never met any deaf people, um, and I had never even thought about adoption. When I was 13, my mom found a magazine with an article in it about an all-deaf orphanage in Liberia. And I remember I read it and I told my mom, I said, someday I'm going to adopt deaf kids from Africa. And the year was 1998, and that's the year that Levi was born. When I asked Marissa to date me, she gave me three rules and stipulations. Um, first, that she was looking for a husband and not a boyfriend. Uh, that I couldn't tell her I loved her until I gave her an engagement ring. And lastly, that she was going to adopt deaf kids someday, and that if I wanted to marry her, I better start learning some sign language. So I signed up for a couple sign language classes, and we started dating. Then the Haiti disaster happened. I remember seeing pictures and video clips and just feeling crushed. Um, it felt like we were focused on all the wrong things. You know, we were worried about what our next career move would be. Um, I was wondering where I was going to be traveling, and people were dying. Um, kids were dying. Kids didn't have families. And it just hit us that, you know, now was the time we needed to do something. And I told Abe, I said, we need to just go ahead and adopt now. In January of 2010, we applied to an agency. And in May later that year, we transferred to America World and joined their Ethiopian program. People thought that we were crazy. They told us that we were too young, um, that we hadn't been married long enough, uh, that we wouldn't know how to parent, and um, we faced a lot of opposition, a lot. Um, but it didn't matter. We knew that God had called us, and we were just gonna follow through with that. At the time when we filed our application, referral times were taking about four to six months, um, but because we had requested deaf children, um, it took about 15 months for us to get a referral. We found out about Levi. Um, it was July 31st, 2011. I remember I was at a show that day. It was right before I went on to perform. And um, I remember I got a single sentence email about Levi. And I just started bawling on the spot. And I told Abe, that's our son, that's Levi. We immediately began pursuing Levi. And um, in October of 2011, just two months later, um, we found out about another deaf boy whose name is Micah. And um, we started trying to adopt them both. And we just had all these problems come up. Um, we were told that their cases were impossible. Levi was about 12 at that time, and Micah was about 10. I have to say, from a purely logical standpoint, the idea seemed kind of crazy. I mean, teenagers? We're only 10 years older than they are, um, but that didn't matter because God had called us to get them. We knew they were our kids. In April of 2012, we found out about Zaria, and we learned that Levi and Zaria were biological siblings. And we were also told we would only be approved for two children, and beyond our control, Micah's case was dropped. After a lot of complications and delays, in June of 2012, we received the referral for Levi and Zaria. Um, and while we were excited to get the referral, when we opened it and read it, we were heartbroken and we cried. I grew up in isolation with absolutely no communication. I always felt very alone. I was extremely abused and a lot of people hurt me. Most people want to adopt little cute babies. They don't want to adopt big kids because they're scared to adopt big kids. I used to cry um, waiting for a family, but no, nobody wanted to adopt us because Levi was deaf. Every night I pray for a black hair mommy. I remember back when I was at the America World Transition Home and I would see lots of families coming to pick up their children. 
and I would stand at the gate because no one ever came for me. When I was at America World, I had a reputation as a bully, and I would fight, but it was because it was the only way to protect myself. I couldn't sign, so who could I tell? Nobody could understand me, and no one wanted me. Most big kids, um, they, they're feeling sad or angry or hurt because other people hurt them too. We are, we are big and beautiful and amazing. I grew up without any language, and I grew up without any school. Um, I just had nothing. People didn't know how to teach me because I was deaf. I didn't even know my sister's name when I was growing up. If I was scared or hurt or sad, um, I couldn't tell anyone. There was no way to tell them how I was feeling. I was just trapped inside myself. I remember the first time I saw my parents, and they were signing, and I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. I was just thrilled to be able to learn how to communicate. When Levi and Zaria came home, we were planning on enrolling them in school. Um, we have a deaf school, and we were planning on putting Levi in there and then sending Zaria to public school. And um, we had complications with that as well. Um, nobody had ever come across a deaf child who was a teenager um, and had no language. I mean, Levi didn't have one word. So I decided to resign from one of my jobs, and I stayed home and started homeschooling Levi and Zaria. I was really excited to be in a family, but I also had a lot of fear and anger. My parents are awesome. They just work so hard to take care of us. They're always telling me that they love me, and it really doesn't matter what I do. If I'm on track or if I'm screwing up, they just love me no matter what. I love my parents so much. I just, I love them. I'll love them forever. My, my parents respect me and listen to my feelings and encourage me. Help, they help me face my fears and protect me. And whenever, I, whenever I'm fighting, they always love me. Love my parents. My mom and dad are the best. I don't want anybody else. Only my mom and dad. A month after we left with Levi and Zaria, um, Natalie came to the transition home. Then later, August of 2013, um, Marissa came home from work one morning um, and she was just sobbing, um, saying that she'd seen this video and there was this girl and we just had to go get her. August 18th, I was sitting at work. It was really early in the morning, about four. And I remember God was just really prodding me and telling me to open up her file. I remember the moment I clicked it because I knew that everything was gonna change. And I clicked it and it came up and there was this little girl on the screen and she was trying to communicate and she clearly had no language and she was trying to sign the alphabet, just something very simple and she was really struggling. And I remember just looking at her and our eyes locked and I just remember, I felt exactly like she had looked at me and said, Mom, come get me, bring me home. I knew my mom loved me because she made an extra special trip to come to Ethiopia and see me. And she just proved that we, that I had a family and that they loved me. And then six months later, my family came for my court trip. And I was so excited to see them signing. I realized I wasn't the only deaf person in the world and I finally fit in. It's so cool because where we live now, there are so many deaf people. And all over town, you know, a lot of people can sign. Even if it's just a little bit, everyone can sign something. It just makes me really happy. I love being able to communicate. My mom taught me to sign and now I can communicate with Nelly and Lila. I love to chat. My mom homeschools us and she really takes the time to explain things so that we can understand. We've learned so much. Before people said that Levi and I couldn't learn, but we can. Now Levi's in 8th grade, Zaria's in 6th grade, and I'm in 3rd grade. Our kids are such awesome blessings. It's so cool to be their parents. The kids have totally changed our perspective on what's important in life. Um, they're all so different. Zaria is like me. She's um, shy and caring. Uh, Levi is Mr. Outgoing, happy-go-lucky. Um, and Natalie, we call her Mini Marissa. She's loud and sassy and brave and strong. We all balance and complement each other. 
I love my kids so much and I'm so grateful and honored to be their mom. Um, they're amazing. I can't stop bragging about them. They're just, they're amazing. And um, it's so fun to have them. Um, I love raising teenagers. It's a blast. It's also scary. I mean, we have one child who's asking to date and to drive and then two tweens who act like they're 21. But they're just amazing. I just, I love them so much. We've really had the privilege of seeing God's power and his redemption through this whole process in all of our lives. Currently, we have one compassion child that we sponsor um, in Ethiopia. We have an Ethiopian family that we help to sponsor. And then also, we're in the process of adopting Micah. We're excited to see what God's gonna do in the future. My dream is to go back to Ethiopia. I'd love to be able to teach people about Jesus and to be able to teach deaf children. I'd also love to be able to build shelters for homeless people and just give people everything that I can. I will go back one day. Thank you, America World, for helping bring our family together. Congratulations on 20 years. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, bye.